Kimberley Conti is one of only a handful of female race directors, not only in Australia, but globally in cycling. Kimberley runs a tight ship at the Tour Down Under. It's a women's stage race with an international reputation for excellence. Well, Kimberley, it's so great to see you and happy International Women's Day. Thank you, Kate. Happy International Women's Day to you too. It's a pretty exciting day. Yeah, it really is. Our, our theme uh, this year is Choose to Challenge, and I think what you're doing uh, in the event directing space is certainly uh, a big role for the women and leading the way there. Uh, the Tour Down Under in 2021, as usual, a great success, uh, but a little bit different to normal. Is it a different process to run a national-based event versus an international one? Um, it is, and it gave us a lot of opportunities. You know, we didn't have the same look. We didn't have the same race. We knew that going into that. But it gave us an opportunity to really put it out there for our domestic riders and to be able to focus on that, plus have our Australians coming in from overseas. Uh, it was quite an exciting uh, challenge and uh, one that we were happy to take on. It's, uh, it's fair to say that when you think about a race director, you kind of think, Without them, the race just doesn't happen at all. But what are the nuts and bolts of what goes into uh, your daily job? Uh, it, you know, it changes a lot. I would say right now, the big thing I'm working on now is routes for the following year. So that's a, probably the biggest component of my role, uh, at least at the beginning. And uh, so I do a lot of consulting from a technical perspective because I'm also an official. So, um, so that plays into it. But it's really designing routes that are going to really showcase where I think I'd like to see uh, for the women riders. So whether I want uh, things to be quite technical or uh, quite impactful, uh, I love short, punchy course courses. People know that about how I design things. And that's probably the bulk of it. And then also playing into the fact that, you know, we're a tourism organization as well. And we get the chance to focus on some of the most beautiful areas here in South Australia. And that's always one of the best parts of my job. There's nothing better than setting a route, uh, which I did a few days ago, and then heading out on the bike uh, and testing it out from my perspective. So at the beginning, it's really that kind of design and that creativity that comes into play. And then looking at the race again, do I like the flow of a stage? Do I want to move the climb from one part of the race to another? Um, that really is the beginning of it. And then we go into all the type of technical meetings, uh, meetings with you know our other stakeholders, police department, which was so important this year, uh, the work that we did with SA Health to make sure that this event could be run. I always say we need events that are safe and successful, and that goes without saying any year, but this year particularly, there was a lot of obviously extra focus to, due to COVID. So that's probably the nuts and bolts of it at the beginning, and then it becomes more frenetic and technical um, as I start contracting teams and working out who's gonna be coming, which riders are going to come, will that feature, in the courses that I've designed and then just getting everyone on board. I think the main thing is just being a leader because there's so many things that happen as a race director that fall under your remit. Uh, and then as you become closer to the event, that gets even bigger and stronger and that envelope of what you're taking care of during, during the day, um, knowing that you're responsible for that entire package as it moves down the road on race day uh, is um, pretty, can be pretty daunting. <laughs> Well, you make it sound quite romantic, actually. We'll throw a beach into this course, a beach view and a winery in uh, over there. But as you say, it can yeah, be pretty idea. intimidating. <laughs> but it must be pretty satisfying uh, when it all comes together. What even drew you um, toward being a race director? Um, I got involved in cycling, in men's cycling, actually, uh, when I was still living in the United States. I was still competing a bit as a triathlete because uh, that was kind of winding down. I knew I still wanted to be involved. I was coaching and um, I had a small women's cycling group that I was coaching and really loved that part of the event and got involved as a volunteer um, with a group in the United States called Medalist Sports. And uh, thankfully, uh, after that, uh, I've been with them ever since and started organizing events uh, and different capabilities in different areas. And for me, uh, just kind of working my way through events, I'm just, was something that I really wanted to focus on. I knew that for women's sport, we could do better. Often I was seeing women's racing in a, what I would call in a box. You know, women would come out and they do a criterium or they do a square around it uh, in a stage and the men would go off and race and come back. And that was the romantic race. If you want to talk about things being romantic. I, I knew we could do better. I knew that if women were exposed to more technical courses, first of all, we know they can race that. That's not never been the issue. 
but fans would start to see that. People would start to see what they were capable of and how exciting women's sport is. Yeah, I mean, I look forward to the day, Kimberly, when it's just cycling, not women's cycling and not the yep. women's tour down under, but just the tour down under. Uh, and I guess we'll get there. In the race directing space, and in fact, in leadership in women's sport, um, you might be horrified to know that only 13% of our leaders in sport in Australia are actually women. Um, do you ever really notice that? Do you ever feel like you're kind of the odd one out uh, in a real boys club? Um, yeah, I did at first. I think uh, I was a little bit nervous about that. I mean, I, I think I go back to being a triathlete again to that background where I just competed with men. You competed in opens. And, and so it, for me, it wasn't as obvious there. When I moved across into cycling, I did notice, particularly in that leadership role, that oftentimes I was the only woman in the group. And I was probably maybe a little hesitant at first about that. But in reality, I thought, well, what does it matter? I, I know I can do this job, um, as could lots of women and so it shouldn't really matter uh, and it doesn't really matter I, I did at first encounter a little bit of um, uh, a few situations a few stories where uh, i'd be standing there on the day the stage one and uh, my husband would be coming up to see if i needed anything someone would ask a technical question and they'd ask it of him instead of me and he would just start he'd say i have no idea what they wouldn't know the answer at all you need to speak to the race director she's standing right next to me but but he'd also get quite upset at but as I as I would I, I I think at first people just didn't quite take that seriously or they just weren't quite sure um I guess how to approach me for some reason so but I've always seen it as it shouldn't really matter what 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 anything I am as I just thought I could do the job and I was determined to do a good job and to prove that it didn't matter if I were a female uh, and it shouldn't really matter uh, or if I to do the job uh, you're gonna put on a good race yeah, I feel like you might have some more stories there, Kimberly, that could come out uh, over a glass of wine in one of these beautiful wineries that we go past uh, in the course that you've designed. Uh, why do you think that there aren't more lady leaders in sport? Do you think it's an intimidating uh, space to step into or, um, you know, do you think that the change is really happening? Uh, I think today the change is really happening. Um, it's good to see that. I know when I came into officiating, I was really... Um, I had there were women that had already stepped into those roles before me and there are women within the Oz cycling officiating roles uh, that work not only on a national level but an international level so I, I knew that that was attainable and achievable and I could see those strong role models out there and I've always been really grateful to those who paved that way before I got there um, I never honestly thought too much about being a female and being a race director until someone asked me the question, how many of you are there around the world? Um, and it, whilst yeah, I hear that there's only a 13%, um, I'm sure that that will continue to grow. We have a really strong pool of athletes and of people that surround the sport. And if I go to my office now, the Tour Down, Tour Down Under team uh, are mostly female. So there's a lot of leaders within that team, whether it's marketing, uh, whether um, it's in admin, whether it's in race direction, there's a lot of us in there now. And uh, I definitely think the change change has taken place in that res respect. Well, you guys are just doing an awesome job over there and achieving some really incredible things, not just for the women, but uh, for the sport of cycling uh, in general. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I just have to make one request for next year's Tour Down Under. Can you send the women up the corkscrew? I'd really love to see that. <laughs> you know what, I was there the other day. <laughs> Actually, I have a few. I've got a couple up my sleeve that I'm really waiting. And so when we make that world tour announcement, which um, will come at some point, uh, I have a couple of really spectacular climbs. Uh, as much as we all love Wollonga, it's not the only climb here in South Australia. And uh, we don't do the Alpe d'Huez every year at the Tour de France. So um, I'd really like to see some different climbs, particularly for the women, because I know they'd really excel. Yeah, well, some pretty exciting um, things yet to explore at the Tour Down Under. Kimberly, thank you so much for joining us. I feel like we could uh, chat to you uh, all day. Alas, our time is up. So happy International Women's Day, and uh, we'll see you for the Tour Down Under next year. Thank you so much for your time, Kate. Appreciate it. Thanks, Kimberly.